Command and Conquer, Westwood's phenomenally successful real-time wargame, was a runaway success. During the peak months of its popularity, it sat on more hard discs than a dyslexic prostitute manages throughout the entire career. You played it, I played it, we all bloody played it. Some of us even linked up and played it head to head, in an orgy of tactical manoeuvring and relentless bastardry that would have given Genghis Khan a cob on it couldn't dent with a steak tenderizer. Now we have a sequel, of sort. Red Alert is apparently not Command and Conquer 2. No, it's more like Command and Conquer the previous generation. As if you didn't already know, the action is set in an alternative version of the past in which Hitler never made it to power. In fact, he never made it very far at all. Albert Einstein, no less, managed to nip back in time to 1924 and bump off the would-be Führer before he could wreak very much in the way of havoc. How's that for a successful bit of reverse engineering? Well, far from ideal, actually. Einstein's time travel assassination may well have erased the malevolent Zebedee from history altogether, but it also had an undesirable side effect. Aside from robbing the world of an easy insult to her the traffic wardens, it paved the way for another mustachioed despot to start entertaining the prospect of total world domination, namely Big Joe Stalin. Without World War II to keep him and his troops busy, he decided the ideal way to stave off that indefinable, omnipresent sense of ennui commonly known as peacetime, was to invade as many countries as possible, painting the globe red, if you like. So the lights are going out all over Europe, and it's down to you to switch the buggers back on, unless you're playing as the Soviets, obviously, you pedantic tosser. Now, assuming that you're familiar with CNC numero uno, what you'd probably like to know is this. How does Red Alert compare to that? And most importantly, which bits have improved? Well, the graphics, for one thing. If you happen to be playing under Windows 95, it's SVGA City for you. A slightly non-conformist 640x400 resolution, to be precise. But I won't even start to bang on about how lovely and detailed it is, because you can see that for yourselves. And anyway, that visuals aren't exactly the point here. It's the gameplay we're interested in. And while that seems to have remained more or less the same, the wealth of new units and structures send the fun factor scaling to new heights. Paratroopers, guard dogs, submarines, medics, spies. On paper they sound like small beer, but in the game itself they're a godsend. The single player missions display more variety than the ones on offer in old CNC. They're also a damn sight harder unless you play on the easy setting, with a learning curve resembling a brick wall on occasion. Some of them will induce a severe case of desk-thumping, tooth-gnashing, monitor rage. Go through Mission 5, for example, as the Allies, without swearing out loud, and I'll send you a thousand pounds. As ever, you can choose to play as either side, with the Soviet missions being, to my mind, faintly superior to the Allies' equivalent. But the multiplayer options. Ah, uh, now that's where things start getting really cool. Red Alert has loads of new and amusing multiplayer options, my favourite being the Allies' sneaky and shockingly handy ability to construct fake buildings out of blazing saddles in order to fool the enemy. There are radar jammers, ore thieves and invulnerability devices, but all these new additions, superb though they are, are not the special thing about the multiplayer options. The special thing about multiplayer options is that they all work. They're easy to set up, even I manage it and incredibly good fun to play. Within 30 minutes of installing a game on my home PC, I was playing head-to-head -head via Westwood server against a guy in New York. Despite the odd slowdown, the game ran smoothly and with no visible glitches. Incidentally, my opponent pissed all over me, and uh, being an American, he celebrated his victory with grace, dignity, and by sending the message, YOU SUCK, about a million times. Such decorum. So, the internet option works. Head-to-head -head modem mode works. And anyone who's got access to a network can start rubbing their hands together at the prospect of seamless eight-way action. But what about those of you who don't have any of those things? Are you going to feel left out? Nope. Because thanks to the superb skirmish mode, you can play against up to seven computer-controlled opponents with all the special multiplayer features switched on. It's a great way of trying out some of the more advanced hardware, and it widens the old addiction window considerably. 
Oh, and there's even a map editing program bunged in, so you can build your own battlefields. Neat. Summing up, Red Alert is one of them time sponge games. You think you've been playing for half an hour, but a quick glance at the clock reveals that it's now the year 2087. It's brilliant, the game being the equivalent of an unputdownable book. What more can I say? Well, not a lot really. Check out the score. 94%.